For Grayson, back again with another video, and it's a different sort of video. We have got a retro race review, and we are going 19 years ago into the past, into the era where Michael Schumacher was about to clinch his seventh world title. We are looking at round seven of the 2004 World Championship. I was scrolling through YouTube looking for something to watch, and I saw 2004, round seven, European Grand Prix full, uploaded on YouTube, and I went, I better put that on and I'll get a wee review. So you're going to get driver ratings as well in this race review because guess what? That's exactly what we did. But of course, let's go back to 2004. Schumacher absolutely dominating the Ferrari car. I think 2002 is probably a bit more dominating in my opinion, but 2004 was still good for them. But we lined up on the grid. We had Michael Schumacher at the front with David Coulthard starting at the back and going into turn one with a bit of chaos with Trulli. And Sato trying to get past Schumacher, late breaking, no really happening. But then behind, Ralph Schumacher and Juan Pablo Montoya collide. We've got Damata having to retire because of, of Schumacher. And what's insane about this, no safety car. Because guess what, guys? See, back in the day, they did not care what happened. Literally, it, it took something like monumental for there to be a safety car. Like, it would, like, the cars would still have to be on the track back in these days for it to be a safety car. Like here, they're not on the track, they're like in the gravel trap. Obviously now, like, I mean, you know, you know, I don't need to explain what happens now, but, um, yeah. I mean, in terms of this incident in the turn one, Ralph and Montoya, they kind of both lock up trying to avoid Barrichello and then they kind of hit each other and then Demata is kind of unlucky because Schumacher, Ralph, just pulls off to the side and that's it. Also on the opening lap, um, You've kind of got Trulli, who just randomly like drops down the order. You don't really see it on the hard cam. But after this, Schumacher, Michael, basically pulls an 18-second gap, which was absolutely insane, mad. Um, and then he does the first stop, and he comes up behind a train of seven cars. Uh, then we see like, the likes of Raiken and Pitten. But bang, his engine blows up. Raiken and Zook, Coulthard's making his way through the field. But then later on in the race, his engine goes up. So at this point, the McLaren just could not finish a race. Kind of sad to see. Um, Alonso run wide, right? And truly, and like two other cars overtook him. It was very weird. Don't understand what actually happened in this incident. Like, he just ran wide. And for some reason, it looked like the car was breaking down. Then he was fine. Don't understand it. Um, Sato launched for a manoeuvre on Barrichello, but broke his wing. And then he had the pit. And it ended up with Michael Schumacher winning the race. Because... Yeah, total domination. The I mean, like, you know what I liked about this race, though? Obviously, you'd refuel him, so you didn't actually know who was on what fuel loads, and that's why Schumacher was able to pull an 18 second gap, but it didn't really matter. Low fuel, high fuel, the Ferrari was unstoppable this weekend, and he bounced back because it was the last race in Monaco where he retired, of course, and it was his 200th Grand Prix this week in the Nurburgring Ring and the Grand Prix of Europe, and he's won. It's a Ferrari 1-2. Jensen Button kind of just survived all the chaos, didn't make any mistakes. Really good overtake around the outside of David Coulthard during the race. So that was phenomenal. But let's look at the final classification of this race, and I tell you what, there was barely any overtakes, man. A race devoid of any overtakes. But we'll look at the class final classification, and I'll do my driver ratings. But as you can see, guys, here is the final classification. We had Michael Schumacher leading home from Barrichello, Button, Jono Trulli, Alonso, Fischer, Weber, and Montoya. Of course, at this stage, um, only the top eight got points. When they had Massa, Heifeld, Panis, Clean, Pantomo, Bruni, Sam Gartner, Sato also retired with his engine problem, Coulthard, Raikkonen, and then, of course, we had Damata and Schumacher at lap one. Um, in terms of qualifying, Schumacher led by six turns, but it was at a point where, you know, fuel loads were like, oh, what's going on here? But, I mean, it's a massive gap. I don't know, I don't know what happened to Barrichello to be a second behind his teammate, but I guess he fixed it in the race. But we're going to start from the back and make our way to the front. Christian Damata qualified 11th in the Toyota I think that's just where our boots where the Toyota was, outside the top four teams, but a bit quicker than the rest, around about um, the same pace as like Cyber and Jaguar. Um, but for them, for the matter, I'm going to give him a five. Ralph Schumacher, qualified ninth, retired at turn one, hit his teammate. It's going to be a two out of ten for me. Even though I don't think it was many people to blame, it's just a racing incident. It's not good enough for Ralph Schumacher. Raikkonen, started fourth, was looking really good. I'm going to give him a six, but his engine went boom, and that's kind of just a running trend. Well, Coulthard's engine went boom yesterday, and Saturday, 
he did all right in the race to make his way up, but then his engine went boom again. So I'm going to give Coulthard a five. Next up to Kumasato. You know what? He was on for driver of the day, and then he risked a manoeuvre on Barrichello, broke his wing, and then his engine went. But again, his engine would have went regardless, so I'm going to give to Kumasato. I'm going to give to Kumasato a six. You know what? It was a good race. Bumgartner, standard five. Bruni, standard five. Pantomo, standard five. Because, I mean, what, what else can you really do in those cars? Even though the Jordan wasn't actually that bad this year compared to the Minority. The Minority was obviously, like, you know, the slowest car on the El Gredio. But, um, yeah, it is what it is, and we got to move on. Um, next up with Christian Kleen in the Jaguar, finishing 12th. It was a bit <sighs> stupid with his, like, blue flags. He was kind of almost biting people at the race, so I'm going to give him a four. Uh, Olivier Panis, I'm going to give Panis a... I'm going to give Panis a... I'm going to give him a 5. I mean, he started 10th and he got beat by, like, Heifelt and Massa. Up next, Nick Heifelt. I am going to give Nick Heifelt a 6. I was going to give him a 7 there, but not quite. Um, but that's what it is. Uh, Felipe Massa started 16th and got 9th in a cyber. And he, he got an absolutely awful start as well. And he made his way through the field. So I'm going to give... No, wait. I did get an awful start. So I'm going to give Massa... I'm going to give him a 7 because he actually fought his way through... Um, Juan Pablo Montoya took his team out but he managed to pull it back and he finished where he started and got a point so I'm going to give Montoya a 6 Mark Webber started 14, finished 7th I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 but Giancarlo Fisichella he started 18th and he finished 6th he benefited massively though for like the chaos but again, you still got to finish I'm going to give Fisichella an 8 Fernando Alonso made a few mistakes started 6th, should have benefited more in my opinion so I'm going to give Alonso a 5 out of 10. Same with Trulli. Start at 3rd, finish 4th. I'm going to give Trulli a 6. Just because I don't rate him as much as Alonso, obviously. And then Button. Survived all the chaos. Had a clean race. A few good overtakes. I'm going to give Button a 7. Barrichello. I'm going to give Bar Barrichello a 7 as well. And Michael Schumacher completely dominate it. So I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10, guys. But anyway, that is it for Fall Grayson. That is it for the European Grand Prix. Retro Review. And peace.